I would like to invite Dr. Lim, who is the Head of School for Accounting, Business Studies, Travel and Tourism of Peninsula College. Hi, Dr. Lim. Hello, Dr. Lim. You're on mute. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Good afternoon, Behorns. Nice to meet hi, you again. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. All right. Uh, could you briefly introduce yourself to us? Yeah, sure. No problem. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you here virtually, although we cannot meet face to face. But it's my honor here today to share a few words with you. My name is Lim. Right? Okay. I am currently the head of school, right? Uh, taking care of our business, accountancy, right, travel tourism programs at Peninsula College. Uh, I hold a Bachelor of Economics, majoring in business administration, right, from University of Malaya. Then I worked for a local bank for a few years before I was uh, awarded a full scholarship to uh, pursue my postgraduate study in Japan. So I got a Master of Science in Development Finance from uh, Hiroshima University in Japan. Mm -hmm. Then at uh, that time, I did not want to be involved in education. So I did not actually continue my PhD there. So I came back to Malaysia, right? And I worked for a few international banks and also an American MNC uh, here in Penang. So after that, after working for a few years there, so I uh, decided to join education. So uh, I got my doctorate thesis from my University of Utara, Malaysia. So I was uh, taking my DBA, Doctor of Business Administration. So now I'm at Peninsula College. I hope I can contribute my knowledge, my experience with my students and our young generations. Thank you, Dr. Lim. Thank you for that brief introduction. And I believe you will be sharing with us a short presentation today on resilience. So the floor is yours, Dr. Lim. Yes, thank you very much, Behorns. So let me share my screen now, okay? Right, so now um, it's really my honor today to share a few words with you, okay? So um, now what I want to talk about today is how we should actually tackle right, our career in the post-COVID-19 era. Now, we, uh, <clears throat> all of us are actually well aware, right, okay? Well aware of uh, the changes right, in uh, our job market now. Okay, we are well aware of the changing of a job right, landscape. We are well aware of the challenges in the job market. We feel it, okay? We feel it, right? Okay? We are experiencing it, right? But are we really up for the challenges? Okay? Are we really up for the challenges? Now, for example, uh, remote working, okay? So with this pandemic, okay, I believe we will never go back to the same working culture and practice again. We have the so-called new normal, right? We have the so-called new normal. And there are many changes in our practices, in our work, and so on. So like remote working, for example, okay? You know, last March when our company asked us to work from home, we can work from home. I know many of us are very excited, oh, we can work from home finally. But after a while, you may find that actually working from home is not as nice as you expected, right? Mm -hmm. You have more works. You have no separation of your personal life and your work life. So you start to face a lot of challenges, right? Working from home or working remotely. And also we realize that we may not be so well-versed in using the technology. We thought we are good, but then we found somehow we are not that IT savvy, right? Okay? With the many software, the online platforms or tools, we actually do not know how to use it effectively in our job, okay? And also we noticed that because of this uh, pandemic, and of course, is a trend, right? Okay, the automation is widely used in the uh, in the uh, industries. So, how can we actually um, work together with the automation, manage the automation, right, and interact with all this automation and so on? Not being faced out by all this automation. So, there are many challenges we are facing now. Yes. And um, some of my friends or some of um, okay, some of the persons who are, whom, whom I know, um, they have been jobless right for the last few months, right? Or they have got a pay cut, okay, for the past few months, right? In the past one year, okay, right? So now, so what we should do to weather all the storms of this COVID nineteen, right? To me, right, education is always the compass, okay? Education is always the compass. Is the key. Is the answer. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I strongly believe all the while, knowledge is the power. Okay, knowledge is the power. 
knowledge is the only thing that will follow us until the very last day of our life. Okay, so I strongly encourage all of you here to pursue right, get more skills and knowledge. Now, what you can do, for example, you can take up some postgraduate studies, right? Okay, if you want, right? Okay, you want to take up some postgraduate study, for example, masters, MBA, uh, master in supply chain, right, and so on, related to your job, related to your interests, and so on. This will help you to enhance your employability. Okay, and you may want to take up some relevant courses, right? Okay, relevant to your job demands, right? The skills you need to perform in your work in a more effective way, you may want to have some additional skills which might not seem to be directly related to what you do now and so on. And of course, there are some necessary skills that we need to improve. Um, many of us, we thought that we are good at certain things. In fact, we are not. For example, using Excel, right? So many of us, okay, we thought, oh yeah, I can use Excel. I know how to use Excel. But in fact, we just know the uh, beginner levels or in intermediary level. We are not to that advanced level yet. So probably these are the necessary skills that we need to learn to pick up during this uh, okay, uh, era. Okay, uh, Now you have more times. Uh, you can pick up all the skills, knowledge, and so on. So in, in, in this um, post-pandemic era, okay, in this post-pandemic era, uh, I personally actually have uh, some advices Right, okay, uh, to all of you, actually to myself also, right, okay, to everyone, right. So in this post-pandemic era, what we need to have, to me, there are two very important competencies that we need to have. The first one is the agility, okay, the agility, right. So we need to be able to adopt an entrepreneurial mindset, meaning we need to be able to adapt to, okay, for our changes, to react fast for our changes, to be able to pick up things fast, right? To be open-minded enough, right? And to be flexible enough. We need to be able to learn new things, right? And embrace uh, new challenges, opportunities, and so on, okay? So I, I always believe that, okay, with uh, adversities, there's okay, always come the opportunities, like what the Benjamin Franklin said, okay? So agility, we need to be less flexible, right? Especially, um, those okay uh, employees have been in the workforce for many years right okay so we have been in the comfort zone for many years when there are new changes we are quite reluctant to, to embrace the new changes we should not have this mindset okay we should be agile enough to embrace the new challenges ultimately we will come to our career resilience so like what Bihon said just now right okay, i would like to share right okay, uh, a little bit about like resilience okay Yes, it's true, right? Okay. So all of us, right, can need to be resilient in this uh, in this uh, post-pandemic era. So resilience means the ability for us to um, to uh, uh, cope with uh, challenges, to cope with stress, to cope with all these negative situations in our life. Not only that, but it also means the ability to uh, bounce back from all these adversities, all the negative situations bounce to bounce back, okay? We, we understand, okay, right? We may be very frustrated whenever we encounter any adversities, but but we need to be strong enough, right, okay, strong enough, okay, uh, to bounce back from any frustration, okay? So resilience is a very important competency to me, okay? So we, all, all of us, okay, should, be able to cope right with all the challenges adversity and so on so we i believe right okay we can go through all the adversities now okay we will have a better future better tomorrow if you have this uh, uh, competency so basically these are the few things that i would like to share with you today okay uh if you have any question feel free to uh, let me know and i'll do my best to answer your questions yes thank you dr lim uh, something just came up in my mind earlier when you mentioned uh, learning new skills and taking a postgraduate study. So how do I, as an employee for a few years, change my mindset from an employee to a student back again when I take my, for example, my master's or I continue with 
skills, uh, taking up skills courses, because the mindset is very different for a student and also an employee. Exactly, Beyonce. Okay, right. Okay, that is very true. When we are working okay, for many years, we mm -hmm. are in the comfort zone for many years, right? Okay, so now SPM is a long, long, long time ago <laughs> story, right? Yes. So we are not the students anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest is, okay, you have to throw away all your so called, right? Okay, whatever negative mindset or the conservative mindset that you have, okay, learning has no constraint. I mean, we can learn anywhere, anytime, at any age, mm -hmm. right? So age is not a limitation to you, okay? okay? Right, to anyone, in fact. So please throw away your mindset, okay? Right, okay, uh, I'm so already, no need to learn and so on, okay? That is the first thing you throw away, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you uh, so-called like, refresh yourself, your mindset. You see, your, your, you, have, you might have kids at home, Mm -hmm. right you might have kids so we actually can learn from them you can learn from them right so of course of course i do understand if let's say you are working and you want to study it will be quite harsh honestly right mm -hmm. it'll be you need to have a lot of commitment okay it's a lot of commitment but i can assure you right okay, i can assure you a better future right okay, is ahead of you Right, if you can go through all these negative, all these uh, negative feelings, right, okay, the, a better future is actually awaiting you. Okay, thank you so much. I actually have a question from the audience right now. Uh, this question basically says, I have been jobless for six months now and can't afford to learn new skills as I don't have enough money. How do I learn new skills without money? Okay. Mm, first and foremost, uh, I'm so sorry to hear that you are <laughs> jobless for the past six months, but mm -hmm. I hope you are strong enough and I truly believe that you can get over all this. Okay. Now, um, when we do not have, when we do not have enough, right, financial ability to pursue yes. any new knowledge or education. Now, what I would suggest is, right, you can go for some online platforms, right? Now, we are very blessed. We live in this digital age. We have many sources available online and it's free of charge. So you can actually go for those online platforms, online okay. learning websites. You can pick up some skills you are really interested in or you really need it in your job. Okay. Or you know that this will add value to you. Okay. Or you know that this will add value to you. Right. So there are many, there are actually plenty of uh, free courses available online or some okay. website they just let you pay a minimal amount, then you can get a certification and so on. Or you can get a proper education through colleges, university, right, part-time study and so on. You can actually ask them, do they provide any financial assistance, any scholarship or any, okay, uh, any, any, any things, okay, any bursary assistance to you? Okay, all right. And you mentioned earlier about going online class, going for online classes. We don't have to be face to face. I believe a lot of students, uh, be it primary, secondary, tertiary, they had to shift their mindset from I'm going to school, I'm going to class, I learned in a physical setting. One year ago, everything changed. They have been studying online for the past year. I believe some find it still find it very hard to cope with online classes because they prefer the face-to-face -face setting. How can these students cope with that shift despite it being one year ago? Okay, okay. thanks, Vihon. Yes, it's very true. Attending online classes and playing online games are two different stories. Yes. <laughs> okay. Students may not be focused when they attend online classes, right? They, they might feel lost, yes. Actually, to be very honest, not only students feel feeling lost, when we first started our online lesson, we also felt lost. We do not know what platform to use, how to make our online teaching more interesting, more effective, and so on. But times after time, we get used to it. We explore more and more uh, online learning tools, right, or online learning platforms, which we can engage our students to make our online classes more interactive and so on. So now I can say most of the lecturers or teachers in our country are um, quite well versed to a certain extent to online teaching. Now back to students, right? Okay, as a student, I can understand your feeling. Sitting in front of your laptop, your computer for a few hours, you will lose your focus. Yes, yes, right? Okay, that's very true. So my advice is, right? Okay, my advice is 
you take a short break. You take a short break. For example, just a five minutes break where you can go to washroom, you can have a cup of coffee, you can go to do some uh, stretching and so on. All right, a short break after one an hour. It, it depends on your focus time span. You know yourself best, right? My focus span is one hour, uh, two hours, right, or what? So after this, okay, and I'm sure most of the students when they attend online classes, they actually mute and turn off the camera. <laughs> so you can and actually go, go away for five minutes and watch TV yes. and come back yeah, to say yes. thank you. When we call, are you there? No answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Okay. So, but we we do understand honestly. We do understand the constraints student face. Student face in this online learning and so on. It's, it's something new to us. Yeah. We never did this before, right? And some of our students, they don't have good internet connection. So mm -hmm. their lives always get disconnected. Okay, we do understand that, right? So my advice is to the students, right? If you're listening now to the students, now you can take your tablet or your notebook, pen, pencil, or just a piece of paper, right? You try to jot down uh, the keywords, uh, the key points, or some examples, additional explanation by your teachers, by your lecturer, just jot down, okay? You, as if you're attending classes right in school, right? So you just jot down whatever important points, examples, and so on, okay? And, right, okay, most of the lecturers, most of the teachers will actually have the recording of our lesson, and we share this to our students. So students, actually, after that, after the class, when they, when they feel that they, 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 they might have missed this point, they'll go back to refer to the recording, okay? So you can replay the recording and then okay, try to understand from there. And the best part of recording is you can play as many times as you like, yes. right? So you can just slowly pick up from there. And of course, of course, learning is not only confining to classroom or online classes and so on. You can learn from, say, um, your social media, right? Facebook, Instagram, right? And um, any online website and so on. So you see like Instagram, for example, there are many good Instagram accounts which mm -hmm. they share a lot of good information to you, might help you in your study and so on. So okay. I'm sure like young people like you all, you have uh, social media accounts. So make good use of your social media. You can not only for chit-chatting with your friends, you can use it for your learning purposes. Mm -hmm. So I subscribe a few, like I follow a few Instagram posts, right? I learn a lot from them. For example, World Economic Forum, right? Okay. And also some business magazines and so on. So I find that I can get a lot of new information and new knowledge from this Instagram post. So you can learn from a very comprehensive way, a uh, holistic way, not only in your online lesson, your online classes, not only from books. That is what my advices are. All right. Dr. Lim, I, you are the head of school for accounting, business, studies, travel and tourism. Yes. For some people, they will be wondering, okay, I need to, I want to take up a particular course. I want, yes. I don't know whether should I go for my probably second degree, master's, or should I take up a short course, or if I have decided on a specific, you know, I want a degree or I want a master's, but in what area, in what specialization, how do I know or how do I make the right decision? Because there's so many to choose from right now, actually. Okay, right. Thanks, Bion. Yes, I think uh, many people will have these questions also, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if let's say, right, let's say you, you want to study, okay, you want to further study or take up a course for your job purposes, okay, right? Whether for your promotion purposes or you are ready, right, okay, for the next level in your career, then you're mm -hmm. going to hold some managerial position and so on. I would suggest you to take up a proper education. Right, for example, a master program, okay, master program, right, okay. So, for example, um, many, okay, uh, in my in my experience, I encountered many uh, working adults, okay, when during the edu fair. So they they approach us, they ask us, do we have part time courses, right? Mm -hmm. They have bachelor, but they do not have the the uh, postgraduate master and so on. So they they want higher level of study because they want to be promoted. When the companies okay, want to uh, promote them, company will look at the qualification first. Yes. If let's say you want to study for this purpose, then the best is you get, of course, a recognized certification, right? Mm -hmm. Through proper formal education. For example, Peninsula College, 
we are offering a range of a wide range of uh, uh, programs in different disciplines okay, in different disciplines so it depends on what you want what you are in what you're interested in the which one will help you more right okay so we have uh, business we have accounting we have a uh, travel tourism we have logistics we have computer science and so on right so it depends on your interest and your job the demand right okay, and so on if you are studying or you want to learn just for your personal development your personal improvement and so on then you can always get a short course from any uh, online platforms mm -hmm. or, or online websites and so on so it depends on your own needs and demands i see all right okay we have one question from the audience right now uh, he is asking dr lim i know someone who was in the hotel and tourism line for quite some time but because of the pandemic she is changed she is forced to change their line of field in to another job that is not of their interest do you think she will be able to go back to the hotel line after this event this entire pandemic is over so hotel line some other industry back to hotel line or you know hotel line other industry stay in the other industry but the other industry is not her passion uh, okay very good is it now i myself i work mm -hmm. in banks yes i work yes. in property <laughs> real estate okay. i work in manufacturing and now i settle down in education mm -hmm. so if you want no one can stop you right it's depending on you so if you okay. think that i know if you're interested in hotel line now because of this pandemic yes it, uh, tourism industry is suffering a lot but i believe this is just short term okay mm -hmm. short term we will be keep bouncing back right we will be bouncing back uh, our country have a lot of very good resources for travel and tourism industry okay yes. so currently because of this pandemic not only our country is badly hit many countries okay are badly hit as well right you look at thailand also right so but i do believe that the travel tourism industry will definitely bounce back in another one two years time after the year after the pandemic uh traveling right okay going for vacation is actually part of our life now it's not something luxury it's actually our necessity right okay so yes. to many people to many people it's not something that okay right? oh we cannot afford anymore right so i believe after this uh, pandemic right is over or everything is getting better then this industry will bounce back for sure so now for time being now for time being if because right okay, of your maybe because of the financial stability you have to leave hotel industry and work in other industry fine just stay put first just stay put first while at this time you may want to enhance your employability in future you may want to improve your skills right your competencies right or you may want for example to pick up a foreign language mm -hmm. okay so during this time so prepare yourself for the future okay prepare yourself for the future right now of course if you are in this industry now after a few years you find that hey actually i like this industry also mm. and find no problem just like myself i never thought that i'll be in education never in my life mm -hmm. is my ambition but after i become lecturer right okay 12 years ago right i find that okay i think i believe um i like this industry and i want this to be my <laughs> last not i will not change to other industry okay no more. so <laughs> i no more no more no more no more enough for me enough okay. for me right so you may find your new interest in a new area okay and you develop new skills and you learn new knowledge and you get the more no more new friends so mm -hmm. that is what i feel okay so i hope um you can stay put in this industry first if let's say you have interest fine continue if you find that you don't have interest right then after a few years when you have more opportunities when our travel tourism industry has more opportunities for you and you are ready you are prepared then you can always go back to that industry okay Dr. Lim, just to add on to the earlier question, uh, you, you yourself have been through uh, different, different industries. You mentioned banking, property, now in education. How has moving from one industry to another uh, helped you over your career? 
Mm, okay. Now, the uh, many people would say that if you change too many industries, yeah. then you yeah. will not be able to uh, actually advance, okay, mm -hmm. high to your career ladder because you are like a few years here, a few years there, and so on. But to me, this is an, an asset because I learn different things. I have mm -hmm. different skills and I build up my networking in different industries. Uh -huh. So it's very important to have good networking nowadays. So I know people in say banking, right? Mm -hmm. Industries. I know people in say property industry. I know people in education, in factory and so on. So I build up that networking and that is a very valuable things to me. Okay. And actually to all of you, right? I would say, so is is uh, no, I, I don't feel any right setback when I change industry. Whatever mm -hmm. I learn, right, okay, whatever I learn, it will become right my asset, and I may use yep. it in my other industry. For example, um, for example, like my my first job in bank, uh, I was actually doing marketing. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have to I have to deal with the uh, property developers, uh, the car dealers, right, okay, selling mortgage loan, high purchase loan industrial high purchase loan and so on so mm -hmm. i need to deal with them i need to communicate with them i need to uh, say uh, build up my relationship with them so all these interpersonal skills that i gain right while doing this job will help me in future even though i move to the different industry so mm -hmm. whatever we learn we gain it will always be our asset nothing to lose okay so to summarize that job seekers and those who have recently been re retrenched due to COVID-19, if you're from one industry and you feel that your skills is applicable to another industry, take a chance, try applying for roles that you have no idea, you know, you want to explore, take a chance, take a risk. Who knows that risk will pay off. And in the meantime, if you still feel lost, you can always take a step back or even pause where to stay where you are and just learn new things, learn new skills to further develop yourself. Yes, exactly. Don't confine yourself in one narrow area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lim, would you, could you share with us some word of wisdom or encouragement to job seekers and also um, those who have been retrenched or even those fresh graduates who have been trying to look for a job for the past six months or more um yes no you see like okay, i'm sharing this uh, resilience to all of you right okay yes. so today yes. so i hope all of us will have this competency to be resilient so we mm -hmm. need to be strong right okay and we need to be well prepared mentally uh yeah. we because of the conditions in the country because of the situations the economic condition and so on now, don't expect that you send out one resume, one CV, one job application, you'll get the reply immediately. No. Okay? So you need to be well prepared. No matter how good your result is, no matter how many experience you have, please do not expect your um, the future or prospect employers to actually reply you immediately. Mm -hmm. If they reply you immediately, <laughs> I would say it may be something wrong. They no one apply their job and so on, right? So be prepared because I know we get frustrated easily. We yes. wait, wait and wait. We don't get any reply. So we get frustrated easily. Okay. So be patient, be patient, right? Okay. Uh, you don't, you don't expect that today I send next week, I'll get a reply from them. It may take, if a big company, it may take, okay, for a few weeks. Okay. They only need to skin screen through. There are not many candidates, not only you, right? Okay. So you have to be patient. And yeah. while the, during this period, you have to uh, continuously improve yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. learn something new, right? Well equipped with additional skills. For example, you may want to improve your language proficiency. Yes. You may want to pick up a new language. Yes. You may want to learn some, say, programming like Python, right? To help you to process data more effectively in future, right? So you can make use of this time to learn something new and so on. So, and don't, don't set too high expectant, expectation on yourself. Although you are the top student, you are number one in the class, okay? Please do not overestimate yourself. Okay? I should get the best I, job. I should get yeah. the highest paying job. Yes, yes, my yes correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes, okay? Because like, you know, those uh, good students, 
they tend to have this type of mentality. Mm -hmm. I am the top in my class. Right? I get first class honors and so on. I'm the top in my class. Right? I should get a better chance. Uh, I should get a reply immediately and so on. I am the best among all job can candidates. Uh, not really, not really. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, please do not overestimate yourself. But of course, having said this, I hope you still have confidence in yourself. Okay, you still have confidence in yourself, right? So we, uh, okay, we believe you can go through this. Okay, and we believe you can go through this. And you, once you are prepared, well prepared, one day when the opportunity comes, that's yours. Yes. So for quick advice to job seekers out there, you may send out 100 resumes, 100 Correct. resumes, 200 resumes. You will get a reply. It's just a matter of when. So keep trying and don't give up. All right. Yes. That's all thank for you. today. Yeah. Hey, thank you Share very much, Dr. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Nice okay, to meet you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.